What's up, everyone? This is all Destroyer229, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. Last time, we made it to the very bottom of Area Zero. Got ambushed by the other Coridon and a bunch of other Paradox Pokemon. And basically made it to Sada herself. Our friends are taking care of the other Paradox Pokemon. We've learned that Sada is not actually Sada, but a robot. And the real Sada has been dead the whole time. In this episode, we are going to follow her to what her main mission is. Booster energy. Uh, and that is to destroy the time machine for some reason. Not entirely sure what the main reason is to go and do that. Probably because Paradox Pokemon are really strong and scary. Now I'm being held by Pokemon with certain abilities. The energy fills this capsule, boosts the strength of the Pokemon. I Interesting, because I was just looking at my recent Paradox Pokemon. And they actually mentioned that. Boost proficient in harsh sunlight or if the Pokemon is holding booster energy. And that's the same with between uh, Screamtail and Fluttermane. So they have the same ability, um, which is interesting. So, I mean, you either have to teach them Sunny Day uh, or they hold this item. And it will boost their attack power. So... Interesting, an interesting ability. Um, you can see strange rock-like clump of something. Probably how they make the Terra Orbs. This elevator would take us down to the lower level. Step inside. Destro, it truly is a great relief to me that you came. I will answer any questions you may have. Is there anything you wish to know? Um, so first off, what exactly happened to the real professor? As I explained to you before, the original professor no longer exists. During the destruction of the research station, her physical body received grievous injuries that left it unable to sustain life. I am afraid that this fact may be difficult for her son, Arvin, to accept. Yeah, no kidding. I now manage the Zero Lab in the original Professor's place. Is there anything you else you wish to ask? Um... You know, it seems weird that she develops the robot, despite the fact that she's a professor for the past. Like, if this was violent, this would make a hell of a lot more sense. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> so, I guess what is AI? I know it's artificial intelligence, but we'll just roll with it. An AI is an artificial intelligence created by a human being. A computer draws on the original professor's knowledge and memories to calculate all of my thoughts and actions. The results of those calculations are expressed by this mechanical body, built to resemble the professor in every way. Humanity does not, in fact, possess the knowledge to develop such a sophisticated AI at present. But the crystals that make up the Zero Lab have made such a thing possible here. They are also why I cannot leave this place. Is there anything else you wish to ask? Uh, yeah, what exactly is this time machine that I'm trying to blow up? The time machine is a device that the original Professor and I worked on together. It sends Pokeballs to a different point on the timeline to catch Pokemon there, and it can then draw them back here to the present. When she was alive, Professor Sada had a great fascination with Pokemon from another age. What you might call ancient Pokemon. Even as we speak, the time machine continues to automatically draw ancient Pokemon to this time. Is there anything else you wish to ask? For one, why is it that it's just the Paradox Pokemon and not actually fossil Pokemon that are coming? Like, with the exception of the Galar fossils, why is it that not 
none of the other fossil Pokemon are brought here. That's kind of what my thought process is. It's like, is our fossil Pokemon different from ancient Pokemon? Because that would seem to be the case. What is it that you really want, though? The original professor had a dream of a world in which ancient Pokemon might live alongside present-day Pokemon in harmony. But these Pokemon's powers seem to stem from a primal energy of the ancient past. And this energy has proved too terrible. Their very existence brings destruction to the ecological balance of this modern age. The original professor would say that such destruction is a natural part of life. At present, the barrier around Area Zero is still working to keep the ancient Pokémon from escaping into the rest of Paldea. But we've begun to see Pokémon appear that can break the barrier, such as Great Tusk. Eventually, they will break free of this walled garden known as Area Zero and run rampant across the Paldea region. And when they do, the rich and varied ecosystem of Paldea will be trampled beneath their coming. I may have been created as a copy of the professor, and yet, I cannot seem to find the logic in allowing such a tragedy to occur. But any hope of preventing it would require overcoming the greatest AI that the original professor ever devised. Destro, you have become a formidable trainer. Now use that strength you have gained to destroy the dream Sada once cherished. To save Paldea, of course. I appreciate your willingness to help. We have reached the lowest level. Behold, this is the time machine we perfected using the power of the terrestrial phenomenon. Neat. Doesn't look like there's anything else here, though. To stop the time machine, you will need to use Professor's ID, which has been embedded within the Scarlet Book. It was very like Professor to put the final key we would need in that book of all places. She loved that volume since childhood. If you place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal here, you will be able to stop the time machine. That easy? There is just one issue. I thought as much. If you try to stop the machine, I will most likely attack you. Uh... Artificial being that I am, my own desires can be overridden by the system's programming. Once that happens, I'm afraid I will become no more than a battle machine, bound to defeat anyone identified as an obstacle by my code. My battling abilities are peerless. They are built upon analysis of all the battles carried out by the various champions of the Paldea region. Having seen the bond between you and your Pokémon, however, I believe you can prevail. Once you have raised yourself for this fight, please place the Scarlet Book upon the pedestal. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, this is gonna be interesting. Let's. You know what? I got an idea. Um. Let's go ahead and head back to the bed. Because I. I am not the most confident in my ability to do this first try. So, on the very likely scenario that we go down, let's heal up here. And hopefully that means that, excuse me, hopefully that means that we'll go back to here. Actually. Uh, nope. Oh! 
Various research documents are scattered on the desk. Oh, I was hoping there would be one more... One more log there. There's a picture of a young boy and a mastiff. They look really friendly with each other. Aw. Okay, well, now that we've used the bed, we didn't really need the healing, but like I said, it helps with being able to just... Hopefully, if we lose, and we will probably lose, uh, we'll end up back at that bed as opposed to going all the way back to the research station number four. All right, let's put the Scarlet Book on the pedestal. I have no idea what she's going to... Obviously, Coridon's going to be one of her Pokemon. I have no idea what else she's going to use. ID confirmed. Professor Sada. Access granted. Initiating energy shutdown. Please wait. Please wait. Access denied. Shut down. Command overwritten. Reinitializing. It is up to you now, Destro. AI Sada switching to sleep mode. Activating offensive protocols. My dream is within reach. And you're not getting in the way. Okay, she's gonna start with Coridon? No! Okay, a Volcarona! I don't know who you think you are, but I am not about to let anyone get in the way of my goals. Slitherwing, level 66. Okay, I think I know what her entire team is. Her entire team's gonna be all Paradox Pokemon. Ah, uh, okay, Volcarona is... Fire bug. What? I'm going to assume it's still going to be fire, so let's get. We'll switch on over to Atlas. Hoody, I think is going to be very bad as a starter for this. Music's rocking though. Lunge. Oh, that did a lot. And there goes my attack. This is the power the ancient past holds. Splendid, isn't it? All right, Hydro Pump. Oh, that did normal? That did normal damage. Ah. And I've never heard of lunge. Uh, okay. Um, what else could it be? Um, it could just be Bug. If it's Bug, let's send Cody out. And we'll use Aerial Ace. Okay, it seems to be part Bug at least. Now this is interesting. Child, you actually understand ancient Pokemon's weaknesses. All right, her next Pokemon is Fluttermane. Okay, we at least know Fluttermane's typing. Oh, they all are in Master Balls. Uh, okay, Iron Head. Thunderbolt! Do you imagine you can best the wealth of data at my disposal with your human brain? Okay, and I can one-shot Fluttermane, but I am not faster than it. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, ooh, Cody learns a move. What does Cody learn? Defog! No. Next Pokemon. Sandy Shocks. That's not good. Oh, it's a Magneton. 
Okay, Magneton is usually electric steel. So, I mean, obviously the typings are somewhat remixed. Like, I, it might be that one type is uh, from the original Pokemon, and then one type is new. Um, the question is, is it part steel or is it part electric? Um, let's use superpower. And I won't get a chance to do that. Alright, it's probably electric. Um, so in that case... I guess I could use Tarma. Tarma, I think, wouldn't be too bad. And if things get dicey, I can always use Revival Blessing. Uh, dig. I am faster. Earth power. Okay, super effective. And it one-shot me. Crap. Hmm. Electric ground, then? Huh. Electric ground... Uh, I mean, water would be, uh, I mean, that would be interesting. You could actually use Lorena's Terra-type. That, actually, grass, I think, resists both. Let's go for it. Uh, Terrastalize, and we'll use Aqua Tail. I certainly hope that this works. Power gem! Okay, well thankfully I terrestrialize. Hey! Next is Screamtail. Ah, uh, this is, oh no. Oh, that's bad. Okay, Scream Tail. It was fairy and what? Fairy psychic. Uh, okay, well, this is, this is actually really bad. The, my remaining Pokemon are all weak to, oh god, they're all weak to it. Okay, well, we'll stick with Lorena. Might as well just go with the sacrifice play. Um, honestly, I'm not gonna be able to get a whole lot. We'll go with Aqua Tail. Thankfully, though, since it is terrestrialized, it has to go off typing, so it won't get stabbed. It's gonna take out Lorena, though. No doubt about it. Dragon Dance probably would have been the better move, admittedly, but oh well. Let's go ahead. Um, speed. Jehudi is going to be the best in terms of speed. Um, but we'll send out Hunter. I'm pretty sure Hunter can be faster than a prehistoric Jigglypuff. And we will go ahead and use Shadow Punch. Oh, we're not faster! Okay, well, good thing we have Stab. Okay, um... I, there's Amoongus. Brute Bonnet. Okay, yeah. So, Brute Bonnet, and then Coridon. Uh, let's go ahead and use a... You know what? Close Combat. Yeah. Okay, well down goes that. Uh, I might go down with the life orb. Yeah. Darn. All right, one on one. Jehudi versus Coridon. 
And I've already used up my terrestrialization. Everything is proceeding within my expectations. I'm afraid the probability of you winning is zero. Roaring Moon? A Salamence! Oh no. Oh, we are boned. Oh, we are so boned. Oh god. Okay. I thought it'd be Crydon. Roaring Moon. Um, well, Salamence is usually dragon flying. It definitely looks more flying than dragon, which is absolutely going to be a problem. Uh, I'm still going to try Flower Trick, though. Not very effective. What? Some sort of error has occurred here, recalculating for critical damage. Ugh, I... I've lost this. Unless I can somehow cause flinching, target's attack... Uh, I'm pretty sure I've lost this. Ooh, it worked! So Roaring Moon just has the same... It's the same typing as Salamence! Impossible! Destro! What is this? Did you already beat all the baddies without me? Okay, out with it, you. Who are you really? Thank you for everything. The time machine has finally... She has finally been stopped. You're not, you're really not my mom, are you? Oh, look how big you've grown. So proud of you, my. Sorry. You were alone so long, Arv. Mom? Security system failure. Security system failure. Threat to time machine detected. Threat to time machine detected. Ooh, what's going on now? Is another army of Pokemon on its way here? It cannot be. An obstacle is preventing the time machine from performing as intended. Activating Paradise Protection Protocol to remove the offending obstacle. What? Was keeping the time machine running truly all the professor cared about? Blocking all Pokeballs except those registered to Sada's ID. Wait, what? Program initializing. Gathering terrestrial energy. I'm sorry, children. This is too much for you. You must run! AI SADA disabled. Paradise Protection Protocol initiated. You are not getting in my way. Oh, and now it's all really glitching out. You're challenged by Paradise Protection Protocol. So there's Coridon. Um. Oh no.
Ah. Uh... Um, well, all of my Pokemon are healed at least. But I think we all know what needs to get done. Calcum Pulse? Oh. Okay. So Coridon is level 68. What does it know? Flamethrower, Collision Course, Endure, and Terra Blast. It is a fighting dragon type. Okay. Collision course do. The user transforms and crashes to the ground, causing a massive prehistoric explosion. The move's power is boosted more than usual if it's super effective. Then there's Endure and Terra Blast. Um, okay, I I have a lot of stuff to check in with. Uh Coridon. Uh, let's see. Is mostly a physical attacker. Has very decent speed. Well, actually, really good speed. It's tied with its attack. Defense is pretty good. Special defense a little bit lacking. Special attack's very lacking. Um, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to do this without using items. Um... Do you know? Oh! Oh, no! I... I can't terrestrialize! But Terra Blast should still be using... Yeah, it has a Dragon Terra typing, so it should actually still work. That barely did anything. It changed into its battle form! Let's go, Coridon! You got this! Uh, okay, let's use Collision Course. You will fall here within this garden paradise and achieve nothing in the end. Uh, okay. If the user has terrestrialized, that's the biggest problem. And I have no way of actually terrestrializing it. You will not be allowed to destroy my paradise. Obstacles to my goals will be eliminated. Okay, um. This is bad. Especially since I can't terrestrialize. Okay, I can at least do Endure. This looks like you could be bad! Hang in there, Destro! The data say I am superior! Fall and become a foundation upon which my dream is built! Giga Impact! Oh! Oh! Um... You took that hit like a champ! You can do this! I know you can! 
So... Did it do that because Coridon just naturally has affection for boosting stuff? Or was it because I did that picnic that one time? <laughs> Pull off a win here? This doesn't look good. Hey, Destro, your Terra Orb's glowing. Destro, Crydon, terrestrialize, and finish this off. Oh, all stats are raised. Uh, I take it, yeah, because it's technically a trainer battle. Terrestrialize, Terra Blast. That was a really cool set piece. You did it! It's not going berserk anymore? How... How very astonishing. To think that you would manage to defy even the original professor's final protections. Are you back to normal? Yes, a completely unforeseen outcome, even for an AI possessing the most sophisticated technology ever conceived. Even on the brink of despair, you children did not give in, and instead proved your worthiness. Showing the wisdom to think for yourselves, the courage to hold faith in your friends, and the fortitude to do what had to be done. No matter how difficult your own pasts may have been, I believe you will be capable of walking whatever paths you choose for yourselves now, with pride. I thank you, Destro. I thank all of you children. But I am afraid that the time machine cannot be put to a complete stop so long as I am here. It appears I myself am part of the system that ensures the machine reboots when stopped. Huh? W what does that mean? I am sorry. You know, when I was watching you all on your adventures from down here, I felt a sense of jealousy. I envied you your, your freedom. The way that you came together, working in league with your fellows and caring for them. The way that you sought strength and to better yourself, throwing all you are into your battles. The way that you would face down even the greatest enemies to save that which you loved. The way that you never ceased to seek, nor to fight for, a treasure all your own. Ah, the way that you soared free through the very skies on those wings of yours. I wish that I too might be free as you all. Free to seek out that which I might treasure above all else not bound your own treasure as long as i remain here the time machine will not stop for i am in inextricably connected to it so i have made a decision i will use the time machine to journey to the world of the ancient past that i have dreamed of what you can't just leave now right when we finally reached you I am not going only so that the time machine can be stopped. I also cannot deny my desire to see that ancient world for myself. Is this what it feels like to have your heart race with the thrill of adventure? 
Arvin, I am sorry that I kept the truth from you for so long. I inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the Professor, and so I understand better than any. Your mother truly loved you. You... You can't! You can't just go and say a thing like that now! No. I suppose you're right. I am sorry. Arvin. Coridon. Destro. It is a little sad, but I'm afraid this is goodbye. Mom! Farewell, my free adventurers. I bid you adieu. How could you just go? Mom? Arvin? You okay, bud? <sighs> yeah. And somewhere deep down, I... I kind of already knew it. I knew that thing was fake, but it... It said my name, using her voice and wearing her face. Even if it was fake, it, it felt real, you know? And so I just... I... Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. That, that's okay. I guess Crydon's sad too. Oh, but that battle form helped! tries to nudge at me for a belly rub while it's huge like this, I seriously think I'm gonna die. Hey now, let's not skip over the big win here. Destro and Karida just saved all of Paldea! Th that's right. You both did amazing. Thanks, Destro. Yeah, that's my bud Destro for ya. You know, Arvin, uh, even though the professor's gone, I bet she's finally having a real fun adventure of her own in the past. Yeah. Thanks, Penny. Uh, yeah. Sorry. What should we do now, Destro? Let's go home. I'm beat. You said it. Come on, everyone. Let's make our way home. Okay, everyone, listen up. What is it? Let's take the long road home and get a little more fun out of this adventure. I don't think I really... Sounds great. If we love on snacks first, I'm in. Hey, Destro! N not you too. Oh, all right, fine. I guess we're doing this. And this has been Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet.
I must say, this is probably one of the most fun that I've had with Pokemon in a very long time. Which is honestly a bit frustrating when the game purposefully tries to make itself really easy. And I had to put so many limitations to make it a, a challenge. And of course, that challenge is what makes it fun for me. Because, you know, even, like, I have not lost so many battles in a Pokemon game ever before this. Like, it is insane how many battles that I lost. And I still feel good about it because I feel like that should be part of the adventure. It just kind of sucks that... I mean, look at all the limitations I had to play. It was essentially set rotation, even though that wasn't an option in the game anymore. Um, Nuzlocke catching rules. No more after you have a full party. Limited in terms of the Pokemon that you can use. No items in battle. Uh, no friendship stuff to get the extra bonuses outside of you know, with the battles in terms of like, oh, they shook off the status damage. Oh, they endured. Oh, they got a critical hit. Like, I had to put in so many limitations. It was definitely worth it. Don't get me wrong. But it's just a little bit of the issue with Pokemon is that they really just make it super easy that you breeze through it and it doesn't get all that fun. Montanavera definitely proved that it was not fun. Like, yeah, I breezed through that gym battle, but that wasn't fun. That was just a curb stomp. Meanwhile, like, I'm honestly surprised I beat Sada first try. <laughs> like, that was, that was a thrilling battle at the end. Especially since, like, I only knew, like, two? Three. I knew half of her team. Based on the battles up until then. But, seriously, like... Ow. All of these major set piece battles, they've been proven to be a lot more fun when it's an actual, you know, hard earned victory. And I really wish Pokemon would embrace that and embrace selectable difficulties. In terms of the story, the story I think is pretty good. I think. Probably the weakest is the last bit there. I feel like maybe if there was just a bit more of a build-up with Sada. Like, that's kind of my main issue with the story, is that Sada's role in it is super minimalized. And it almost kind of feels like a Chairman Rose situation, where not much is really built up, except at the very tail end of the game. Granted, this game does it a lot better than Sword and Shield did, because dear god was that a train wreck. Uh... But I still think it would have been better if there was, like, let's say every three, every three badges, quote unquote, that you get, whether or not that's gym badges, or doing the Team Star, or doing the Titan Pokemon, every three that you get, you get a main mission that you have to do for Sada, and it's something for like, oh, they wanted to research more of the Terrasilize phenomenon in the real world. Oh, there's some Paradox Pokemon that escaped, and you need to round them up. Um, oh, there's some sort of outbreak that's affecting a city. Um, you go take care of it. Like, if there was something that would basically kind of lead in more with that, as well as whether that's a lead up for Sada, or kind of showing a bit more of what her personality would have been, had she been alive the whole time? Because honestly, that's probably one of the major plot twists I think Pokemon has done. Uh, probably next to just end saying that he's the real uh, leader of Team Plasma. Like, it's one of those things like, wait, what? <laughs> um, I still think that there should have been a bit more buildup with Sada. Thank you, treasured friends. Um, but honestly... Most of the other story beats, I think, prob were well done. Probably not to the same level as, like, Black and White. Because I honestly think that Black and White is still just the best Pokemon game, period. Um, But I think it's at least on par, if not just a little bit better than Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon, I think, is still pretty good. 
in terms of Pokemon stories. And this is probably around that league. Pretty good, not the best, but still really well thought out. It's just, wish Sana was maybe a little bit more built up. And obviously, performance issues. Dear God, it's been so long since this game came out and there are still performance issues with it. Why? <laughs> Calling students to the director's office. Master Destro, Miss Demona, Master Arvin, and Miss Penny. Director Clavel would like to see you in his office. Oh, we're in trouble. Uh, okay, so other thoughts before we kind of continue on with whatever this is. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the big thing. Like I said, this is probably one of the most enjoyable times that I've ever had with Pokemon. And it is specifically making it difficult, but not insane. Like, I've seen people do really insane runs with Pokemon, like, completely randomized, Nuzlocke, uh, legendaries are spawning everywhere else. Like, really stupid crap. Um, but... Like, I kind of wish Pokemon would at least embrace having some difficulty. And I get the feeling that we're probably not going to get that anytime soon. I mean, look at how well Pokemon has performed since X and Y, really. I mean, Black and White's probably been where the hardest it's been in terms of mainline Pokemon, not counting like Pokemon Coliseum or anything like that. Um, and that's mostly just because, oh, all brand new Pokemon. And people just hated it at the time, which I don't understand why. I loved Black and White. Even at the time that it came out, I loved Black and White. Black and White 2 was okay, wasn't quite as good. But then, it didn't sell all that well. And then X and Y was super easy and super pandering. And it sold like gangbusters. <laughs> so unfortunately, I don't think we're really going to be able to get what it is that I really want out of Pokemon. Which is, great story, which, this is a step in the right direction. I do think... Scarlet and Violet is a major step in the right direction, especially after the train wreck that was Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield's story was absolute garbage. Can't say anything about the DLC. Maybe the DLCs were a lot better. Never bought the, the, uh, the Crown Tundra or the Isle of Armor DLCs. Had no desire to do that after just the atrociousness that was Sword and Shield. Um, but I think the story here, it's good. It's good for a Pokemon game. Not the best in terms of, like, you know, JRPGs in general, but for Pokemon standards, pretty good. Above expectations. Um, I just... Performance issues and difficulty. Those are kind of my main complaints. Just, please, for the love of God, Game Freak, give us selectable difficulty. Give us adjustable. Allow us to customize difficulty. For Christ's sake, most games can do that nowadays. Give us something, instead of just self-imposed challenges like this. Ah, okay, well before we really call it a day, because we do still have other things that we need to do, and obviously we're not done with the series in its entirety. We still, I still would like to catch all the Paradox Pokemon. There's still the legendary Pokemon that we need to catch as well. And possibly post-game story? We'll check in at Clavel's office and then we'll call it a day though. Looks like the hero's finally here. Would you join us, Master Destro? We're in for an earful, aren't we? Guess we'll find out soon enough. No need for concern, you two. I'm not angry in the slightest. I merely called you all here to discuss your fine achievements in this year's treasure hunt. You shut down the Professor's time machine and thus prevented the ancient Pokemon from running rampant across Paldea. Your actions were truly astonishing in every regard, and I couldn't be prouder of you all. Though your decision to enter a strictly off-limits area was admittedly regrettable, eh, you got us there. However, since this was necessary to protect Paldea and its previous ecosystems, 
I'm willing to overlook that particular point. Oh, so we're not getting ready to over the coals after all. Oh, before I forget, Master Destro, there's something I would like you to have. Each of your friends has received one already, so this one is for you. The Master Ball? <laughs> yeah! Alright. Oh, and about the Hall of Fame badge I gave you a short while ago. That gift is one we bestow only upon students who achieve truly remarkable feats. I expect you to honor what that badge represents by striving always to serve as a model for your fellow students. You can count on me. Splendid. Such enthusiasm will surely take you far in life. And Master Arvin, I was so sorry to hear about the professor. You have my deepest condolences. Yeah, well... Yeah, it was pretty rough when I found out that my mom had died. But weirdly enough, my head actually feels clear now. And for the first time in ages, in the Great Crater, I got to learn a bit about my mom's research and what she was trying to achieve down there. I guess if you're building something as mind-blowing as a time machine, that takes priority over showering your son with attention, huh? All I know is, I'm done feeling like some lost little kid. Done. Time to say goodbye, and move on. I'm gonna enjoy every last day till graduation with my buds here. And my boss, Jeff, of course. Well said, Master Arvin. You truly are your mother's son. Of course, I must remind you that you're nowhere near enough credits to graduate. You'll need to study frantically to catch up. But I have every expectation of your success. What? And let's not forget the other good news. Our academy has a new champion. Though we sadly cannot make your valiant deeds in the Great Crater known to the public, your new champion rank at least should be celebrated throughout the whole school. Ooh, I know how we should celebrate. We should hold a Pokemon battle contest. Seriously, could we not? Classic Nimona. A Pokemon battle contest, you say? While your own vested interests in such a venture are more than apparent, Miss Nimona, I think it's a fine idea. But please understand that a large-scale event will be quite beyond us. We've many other school activities to keep an eye on, after all. I'm going to assume this is Gita. Pardon my intrusion, I couldn't help but overhear. Yep. The Pokemon League will, of course, happily lend a hand in organizing this contest. La Primera? Well, well. Most kind offer, Chairwoman Gita. I do everything in my power to nurture young, up-and-coming talent. Though that's not to say only the youth have promise when it comes to Pokemon battles. A former gym leader, the developer of the Pokedex app, this academy clearly counts many skilled trainers of Pokemon among its staff. As such, my suggestion is as follows. Students and staff should compete for the title of strongest trainer at the academy. Whoa, we get to battle the teachers? You can be too, right, Primera? Is that even allowed? The chairwoman's not part of the academy, right? Actually, I think she's the chairwoman of the school board as well as the Pokemon League. Wait, for real? I mean, I knew she was on another level, but... Whoa. Thank you for the invitation, Champion Nimona. I would gladly take you up your kind offer to compete alongside you all, but I am afraid my schedule is already packed tight with work that I simply must attend to. Aww, can't you free up some time somehow? Well, I suppose I might be able to participate if Champion Destro would agree to lend me a hand with my work. Sure! Excellent answer. Much obliged, Champion Destro. To get straight to it, 
I would like you to go out and inspect Paldea's various gyms in my stead. Are they fulfilling their duties as beacons of strength and inspiration for all those aiming to achieve champion rank? Or has their brilliance started to fade? To find this out, I ask that you bring your full might as champion to bear against each of the gym leaders to test their prowess in battle. They are all trainers of exceptional talent, handpicked by me personally. I do not expect you'll find any cracks in their armor, but... Well, consider it a formality. This will also provide the perfect stage for your first appearance as a new champion. Since all the gym leaders will still be expecting me to carry out the inspection, I imagine they'll have mustered their full strength. I dare say they might be more of a challenge than when you faced them before. You get to have all our battles with the gym leaders? Oh man, I'm jealous. Now then, on to another crucial matter. I'd like to discuss with Penny here how to patch the weakness in our league point system. Uh, but there's a bunch of anime I've missed and that's... I was just gonna binge. Thank you in advance for your willing and eager cooperation. I mean, I'll do it. I'll help. Let me help. Excellent. We'll leave it all to it then. Come now, Penny. Aww. This is awesome, Destro. Show this inspection thing who's boss so that La Primera can join our tournament, okay? And enjoy taking another swing at the gym gauntlet while you're at it. I'll take care of filling out the forms and other administrative stuff so the ball gets rolling on the tournament in the meantime. I say, it's wonderful to see you all showing such initiative. You each have a critical role to play. Penny assessi assisting the league, our new champion inspecting gyms, Nimona arranging the event. Give it your best, everyone. So what's Arvin doing? Guess my role so obvious it goes without saying. No, I don't know what Arvin's freaking goal is. Okay, um... Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like, why is it showing me at the zero gate when I'm... Oh. Because the freaking thing isn't centered. But yeah, it's still showing me at the zero gate as opposed to Mezuko. I guess because I haven't technically left the school yet. Uh, oh. Okay, one final thing. Ryford is here? Does she have more information on where the exact stakes are? I do, oh. Now, then why does it, does it just show that that's where she's currently located? Because that's, that's misleading. That's misleading as hell. Anyway, we'll go ahead and call it a day here. So, next time on Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. I guess we have our post game to deal with. We've got to take on all the gym leaders again. Uh, this time at their full strength. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, I guess we could just kind of do it in their sequential order, which we were kind of doing before. Except we kind of jumped Rhyme from 6 to 8. Uh, oh well. Um, there are other things that we could, ooh, let's, okay, I kind of want to see what new Pokemon is there, so we'll check that out as the very last thing as we're doing our outro, hopefully we don't get stopped by dialogue in the meantime, okay, good, uh, so what we'll do is that we will, ah, uh... Part of me wants to just start with the gym challenge. Part of me just kind of wants to finish up doing schoolwork. 
There's still quite a few classes that we still need to finish. Not to mention that we still have, you know, we still have different Paradox Pokemon that I'd like to get. I'd like to get a copy of every Paradox Pokemon that's in the game. Um, so... We are going to need to head back to Area Zero. Uh, because I assume that we can find the other Paradox Pokemon there. We've seriously never battled a Fortress before? Really? How? How? Oh! How to change Coridon's form. You select Coridon and the main menu is open. You can now change between, between its battle and ride form. Uh, okay. Battle form. Oh! Interesting! Battle form means that it joins the party, but it's still part of the team of six. That is very interesting. Uh, anyway. I think what we'll do is that we'll go ahead and just focus on, at the very least, going through one of the classes. I think doing that would probably be a good way to at least start. Because there's still plenty of cleanup work that we still need to do. Uh, the classes are one of them. There's obviously going to do all the stuff dealing with the post game. Uh, and then there's also the legendary Pokemon hunt. And trying to get the rest of the Paradox Pokemon. Since we've only caught two of them. Uh, so that is going to be... Uh, we still have quite a bit of stuff that we basically need to look into. Uh, so, uh, we will start by going with classes. I'll decide which one that we do when we actually get there. And we'll go from there. We still have plenty of work left to do before we end the series off proper. But at the very least, we're officially in post-game now. So until next time, everyone, take care.